Hello, my name is Mike Carey. I want to talk a few minutes about what strong and weak mean in the SVA language. These principles also apply to PSL if you use that language instead. If you're not aware, PSL and SVA do exactly the same thing really, much like VHDL and Verilog. So if we look at this property here, um, it's a normal looking property. And what you may not have realised is when the language was first defined, and the first language reference manual was 2005 for the IEEE 1800 standard, which is System Verilog. Uh, SVA is just an assertion, it's just one chapter inside of that language reference manual. So people used to write properties like this without thinking much about it if they hadn't used another language like PSL, which had concepts of strong and weak before SVA did. So it was only in the 2009 LRM did SVA have the concept of strong and weak. So what this means is anything you wrote in following the 2005 LRM, so if you use a compiler which is compiling with the 2005 LRM, this property is called a strong property. So what this means then is when I just say A implies and then I have the sequence on the right hand side, if A ever occurs during my verification, whether that be formal or whether it be simulation, this property will fail if we have no B occurring. So B is the thing that will terminate evaluation of this property. So there's two ways in which this property can fail actually. So if we have A and then we have a C occurring before a B, then this property will fail. And a counter example, one way in which it can fail is shown here. A occurs, therefore we have a requirement for the right hand side. C occurs here before B occurs. That's a violation of this right hand side sequence. Therefore we expect a failure here. However, if we have A and C stay zero forever and B never occurs, then in the 2005 LRM, because every property was strong because there wasn't a concept of strong and weak defined, if B never occurred by the end of verification, then that would be a failure. So in simulation, for example, if you'd have stopped the simulation one cycle after A and B hadn't occurred yet, that would indicate a failure in simulation. And if in formal verification, it was never possible for B to occur after A where, when C was staying low, then that would also be a failure. So in the 2009 LRM, the concept and the keywords weak and strong were introduced. And what happened was the decision was made to change the default. So what this means is if you type this code in, exactly the same code, and you compile with a 2009 or 2012 compiler, this is a weak property, i.e. it changes behavior from the 2005 LRM. So with a property like this, it's as if I type weak in front of it. So let's show the same example, but with the keyword strong and weak now to see what the different effect was. So literally you type the word strong or weak and you put some expression in parentheses. So and notice this is a sequence. So what strong means is the sequence must complete. And what weak means is the sequence does not have to complete, but the sequence cannot be violated. So given the explanation of the circumstances under which the property fails from the previous slide, what we're saying with strong is that this sequence must complete if A occurs. So that's regardless of whether it's formal or simulation. So if we simulate and we end the simulation early before B's had a chance to occur, that will be deemed a failure. So strong will give us a counterexample that looks like this, a finite length counterexample, or a counterexample which looks like this one, which is an infinite length counterexample. We have to show C being low forever and B never occurring. So this kind of property is known as a liveness property because at least one way in which it can fail requires an infinite length counterexample. If we say weak, we only see this kind of failure, the finite length counterexample. We do not see this kind of failure. Okay, so what we're saying with weak is we don't require that entire sequence to complete as long as it's not violated. So that's saying two different things. So just to recap on that, strong means I'm interested in seeing both kinds of counterexamples. Weak means I'm only interested in this finite length counterexample. I'm not interested in the other one. And as we saw previously that um, weak is the default now for the System Verilog Language Reference Manual 2009 and 2012. So that, what that means is you get the behavior as if you type the, the word weak. So if you say nothing, i.e. delete the word weak from this, it says if you did type weak anyway. However, if you're using the 2005 LRM, if you're compiling with the 2005 LRM switch enabled, then it's as if you type the word strong, okay? meaning you get both kinds of counterexamples. So the behavior, if you say nothing, if you remove these words strong and weak, the behavior depends upon which version of the language reference manual you're, you're, you're compiling with, which isn't a good situation to be in. So I strongly recommend that you always use the words strong and weak to convey what your intent is. Are you interested in both counterexamples or only the finite length one? So let's take a look at another couple of examples. 
um, or the same example actually. So if I've removed the word weak now, um, it depends which version of the LRM I'm using to get the uh, strong or weak behavior. This is the equivalent in PSL and you'll notice, the first thing you'll notice is they're very similar. And yes they are, and in fact it's a subject of another one of these presentations that if you know SVA you can learn PSL in 10 minutes and vice versa. Um, so the only difference here is that word always instead of property. And if you look at these, the operators are the same, implication operators are the same, sequence repetition, this square bracket star is the same. Uh, the thing that's different is this hash hash zero is the same as a colon in um, PSL. And you notice these terms are surrounded by curly brackets. These are called serres. So if I were to type weak here, the equivalent in PSL is shown there, exactly the same equivalent. And if I type strong, to get the same effect in PSL, I just need to add an exclamation mark on the end. Okay, so that concludes this short presentation. Uh, thanks for listening and good luck with your PSL and SVA writing.